All right, boys and girls. She's almost done. Well, it is done. It runs, but needs a drive tune and a full throttle tune still. But anyway, it's a 87 Camaro. 355 small black Chevy. S475 Borg Warner, 10 pounds. Runs pretty good. Used to be a um, blow-through setup, so this is why I'm going to make this quick vid. Um, it never ran right with the blow-throughs. I mean, it ran good, made power, it was fast, but it never ran right. So, under the advisement of some people I know, they said, why don't we go fuel injection? We'll put a parts list together, we'll use Mega Squirt to control it. I said, okay. So it did it, and here it is. And if you want to take your any motor, not really, Ford, whatever, Chrysler, fucking blown mower, you can run it on Mega Squirt. But if you want to take your uh, old school small block Chevy and actually bring it to the new age out of the dinosaur Stone Age, this is what you're gonna need. First, you gotta rip your intake off, distributor, all the other shit that you need to rip off before you change the intake and you gotta get yourself a fuel injector intake that has fuel injector bosses on it or you can use a carburetor intake and have them put in and weld it on and drilled out but that's a process you gotta pay in the machine shop this intake was decently priced so i got this one what it is is a hurricane from Procomp, which is pretty much a victor senior that you can pour it out and make it into whatever you want to make it this is ported to a 1206 because that's what, that's what the heads were and uh it works pretty good it's like a third of the price of an actual senior fuel injector intake so it kind of worked out pretty good um nice piece i have no complaints about it yet and um you're gonna need fuel rails these rails are also from prone cob they're made for this intake these bosses fits pretty nice no spacers on the ejectors needed or any of that um, once you get the rails to seal, which was problematic at first because there's like a little plug on the here. There's a pain in the ass. Don't use Teflon tape or Teflon paste or any of that nonsense. That None of that shit worked. What you use is PTFE, Blue Monster Tape. Once and it's done. Worked perfectly great. Got the advice from one of my plumber friends. And it actually worked good. Put it on once, didn't leak at all. So. Get yourself an intake, get yourself a set of fuel rails, Procom, pretty cheap, works pretty good. Then, you're going to need, obviously, injectors. This is what you're doing fuel injection for, so you can run fuel injectors. So these particular injectors are 1000cc from uh, South Bay Fuel Injectors in New York. Great company to deal with, they sent me the pigtails for the injectors and everything, flow sheets, voltage ratings, everything I needed to make this thing work. So, great company to deal with, you need injectors, give them a shout. Awesome people to deal with. Next thing you need is obviously something to regulate air. This is an AccuFab 4150 style throttle body. Flows in between 12 and 1300 CFM, naturally aspirated. Really, really nice piece. Not cheap, but really nice piece. And don't get, don't get all excited, oh, I run a fast throttle body. From what I hear, AccuFab actually makes all the fast throttle bodies for fast. So there's that identical, the same throttle bodies. So you get intake, you get fuel rails, you get injectors, you get a throttle body. Now, throttle body came with a TPS, throttle position sensor. Need that, very nice, works good. It also came with an IAC, which you really don't need on a race car, but I run it, it makes the idle nice, makes it run better. It's just some people, they sell a cap, you can cap it off if you don't want to run it and wire it in. But it came with it, so I ran it under the advisement of the tuner, and um, that's where we are. It's on there, it works, it actually makes the idle fairly stable. And uh, that is fuel. Now, obviously, if you had a carburetor, seven pounds or five pounds of fuel pressure, it's not going to cut it. You need a fuel injected uh, fuel pressure regulator. This is uh, Aeromotive 13101, I think part number I have it at 43 pounds works pretty good fuel comes in through this dash 10 goes down the driver's rail gets looped through this hose into this rail into the regulator which regulates obviously 
on, on the bottom of it. I have a dash eight going all the way back to the tank. Takes care of that, runs mint. Works like it's supposed to. Now, you're gonna need some sensors to tell the computer what to do and give it information from the engine so it knows how much fuel and when to put it in and all that. Pretty important sensor. Actually, they're all fairly equally important to me at least, but anyway, cool and temp sensor. Pro Comp Intake has a bunch of spots. I actually put a couple of plugs in and everything. It actually has a crossover in the back for the water if you want to do it that way. Some people say it works. Some people say don't. I didn't. Less shit to worry about. Anyway. Cool and temp sensor. Throttle position sensor. IX sensor. And this sensor in the car bed itself. Air inlet temp. It uses the air inlet temp and the cool temp to figure out the temperature of the motor, obviously, and how much fuel to put in, because obviously it's going to need to put in a little more when it's cold and whatnot. Y-band gets hooked into uh, the O2 input on the Mega Squirt. Tells it lean rich, any of that stuff. And uh, that's pretty much it so far. Sensors and uh, pretty simple. Cool and temp, TPS, IAC if you want, it's optional. And uh, air inland temp and a wideband. Uh, the Mega Squirt also needs a vacuum signal or a boost signal. So actually, the AccuFab came with three little nipples on the back of it. Actually, one's a big one who runs the to the brake booster and all that. And there's two little ones. I use one to run to the boost retard box for my ignition, and I use the other one to run straight into the into the Mega Squirt box for the map sensor that's inside of the box because that actually works pretty well and gives it a really nice clean signal. And um, that's it. I mean, this setup is only, it's fuel only, so it makes it a little bit simpler. And uh, I reused my old uh, distributor and my old ignition setup, which is uh, ProBillet MSD and uh, MSD 6AL under the dash. So that's pretty much all there is, really hardware-wise. Intake, throttle body, fuel rails, injectors, and the sensors. The sensors I actually got, I think it was from uh, EFI connection. They sent the kit, it came with all the sensors and stuff. It was uh, actually a Mega Squared installed kit, which was pretty handy because you didn't have to run around. All the sensors were brand new, plugged right in, had no issues with them. And uh, Mega Squared's actually calibrated to use GM sensors. So all the sensors are GM style sensors. It works pretty good. You don't have to sit there and mess around, change values or any of that stuff. So that works pretty good. Now, all the wiring, I'm gonna do another, another video on that because the wiring is pretty, well, it's not complex, but it's pretty up there. All the wiring is put together into this loom. Goes through the firewall. I bought the eight foot long, eight foot long uh, DB37 connector with the eight foot harness. Worked out, man. Had more than plenty left over. It's loomed under the dash. I, I just pulled out all the wires I didn't use because I'm only doing a fuel setup. So there was some there was some wires left over, and I just I didn't deep pin the connector itself. I just pulled them back and tied them up under the dash. But harness comes together here from the other side goes through the firewall right there and it comes into the car under the dash and it comes out here obviously plugs us into the box their db37 connector and this is the vacuum line off the back of the throttle body that runs into the actual map sensor that's inside of the box and i think it's good for 21 22 pounds of boost and this is the actual monster right there a little magical black box ms3 uh it had to be modified for fuel only inside of itself but my uh guy george tuner whiz efi he talks japanese to me all the time when he talks efi but anyway um that's the box that does it all standalone efi rivals seven eight thousand dollar motec computers and what it can do and it's the cat's ass from what i've seen so far with messing with the car and doing the idle and whatnot but anyway i'm not going to get into wiring a lot of it but i'm just going to show you very simply that this switch controls the box you flick this switch gives it power to the box and it sends power to the injectors because the injectors themselves are grounded through the mega squirt so you need to provide them external power this is uh Actually, this powers the relay that powers the fuse box underneath the dash that powers the 
ECU, the MS3, and then it powers the injectors. And um, that's pretty much it, all for hardware. So just to go over it one more time, you get, you get yourself a Mega Squirt or whatever kind of ECU you want to run. I prefer Mega Squirt, cheap. Well, not cheap, but it's good. Eight foot harness, DB37, worked flawlessly. Plenty of uh, plenty of room if you're gonna mount it somewhere like close to the dash and stuff. If you want to mount it like in the center console or anything, then you know. But I have extra harness left over underneath the dash. <sighs> That's it, pretty much. So let's go. Mega Squirt DB37 vacuum line, obviously for the map sensor. And uh, intake, throttle body, fuel rails, injectors. Sensor-wise, you need coolant temp, TPS air inlet temp, wideband, and if you want to run it, you can put an IAC on it, obviously, injectors, and that's pretty much it, so this thing actually runs pretty decent, and uh, we'll see, actually, if it'll actually fire up right now, make sure the switch is on, no, the switch is not on, and uh, get the keys out. Moving the camera around. Hmm, put the fuel on. Mega squirt on. Put the switch.